Alright, welcome back everyone. This is Shadow Drake, and now we're gonna get to the more intermediate or the more difficult concepts. Uh, and only difficult uh, thing with the stack is that there's kind of a lot of stuff that's in, in the background that isn't really known to you. So let me recap really briefly. Uh, you have six pins on the housing currently. You have 16 registers, one RA register for jumping, and you also have a stack pointer. So you technically have about 18 registers of data, but the stack itself has 512 indices for storing data. So, and navigating the stack is kind of nebulous, can be kind of a difficult concept, and may require quite a bit of trial and error, but let, let me see if I can uh, explain it a little bit for you. So, like I said, hidden behind every IC10 chip is you have a stack memory, 0 to 511. So that's a total for 512, I guess, bytes of memory, or however you want to call it, or memory locations for storing num numerical data. And the stack has a stack pointer, and that register is SP. As you can see, it's blue. And no matter what, every chip begins with a fully cleared stack, every value is zero, and an SP is equal to zero. Uh, to make it simple, I'm just going to put a little asterisk next, next to the table so that you can kind of asterisk so that you can kind of see what where the stack pointer is. And so this kind of gets to the self instructions or the instructions that you, that affect the stack within the chip itself. You have the push instruction. And now what that does is you put a value in the stack and it will increment the stack pointer. So for example, right now our stack pointer is zero. If I were to say push a five into the stack pointer, what I am doing is I'm writing this a five in this memory value, and then my stack pointer will go to one. So that will be the next place I can put a number in. I guess if you can think of the stack, it's more of like a first in, last out. So the first values go in, but when you're getting the values out, they go in the reverse order. This is why the SP register can be manipulated. Now, if I were to continue on with this instruction here, if I were to move to the SP an 8, for example, then you know I would have a 5 at 0. I'll change my stack pointer to 8 right here. Now, just just to kind of uh, hopefully keep bringing this clear, let's let's just say we went ahead and push a four right here. So that means at eight there will be a four. Now my stack pointer is right here at nine. Hope that kind of starts to make sense. Honestly, I had to build several tables for myself just to kind of understand where I'm putting the data in because again, this is hidden from you. So that's putting data into the stack. How about reading from the stack? Well, you have two reading instructions. You have the pop and the peak. Now, we'll start with the pop. The pop reads a value and you put it into a register. So if I were to pop to R0, what that does is it doesn't read where the stack is. No. And kind of this says, reads the value at the top of the stack and decrements the SP. I guess the easiest way to think about it is it looks at the number before the stack pointer. See, that is a 4. So what that would end up doing is it will say that R0 is now equal to 4. And so after it does that, then it decrements the stack pointer to 8. This is kind of where it can get a little bit confusing for the stack pointer. Because you read the value before the stack pointer. 
So if I wanted to read this 5, for example, I'll need to make sure that I move a 1 to the stack. So let's, for example, let's move a 1 to my stack pointer right here. So that means now I'm back over here. Now, we're not going to do a pop next. We're going to talk about the peak. Now, the peak is essentially a pop, except it does not decrement the stack pointer. So if I were to peak to R1, what that means is it's going gonna, it's gonna to act like a pop. We're at 1. It's going to read the value before that, which is 0. So I'll get a 5. So what ends up happening is my R1 will equal 5. However, the stack is unaffected. It still stays at 1. So that if I were to push another value, it would be pushed to 1. Now, when you peak and pop, you do not change the stack. As you can see, the 5 and the 4 are here to stay until you override it. So this is kind of where you have to be extremely careful with the stack and that if you want to clear this number, you need to either write a zero there or at some point use a clear DB command. Uh, DB would be for the chip or the housing itself and, chan and that's more than likely going to be enough to clear the stack. I don't think this affects the stack pointer. I kind of forgot to check that, to be honest. Uh, but we'll do that. I'll I'll verify that on the next point because I, I don't want to lead you astray. But a clear DV would change all of these values back to a zero. So I, I'm hoping that this can kind of give you a visual representation of how you mess with the stack. Uh, the final thing, because when you push va value to the stack, the only valid numbers are from 0 to 511. If the stack pointer is 511, let, let, let's say you've been pushing a lot of data in here. If the stack pointer is a 511, you push again, that'll be fine. You know, you'll have, you'll have a value that'll go in here. But now your stack pointer will be 512. Now your S your SP will be 512. That's an invalid number for a push. There is nothing at that location. If you try to push again, your chip will error out. And it's gonna say your stack pointer is out of range. So if if you're pushing data into the stack, 0 to 511 are the only things. So let, let me just write that down. So when pushing. SP, let's do, SP has to be, I know I have just a greater than, but you know, this, this is greater than or equal to. So when you push, SP has to be zero, between zero and 511, or any value in between. Uh, when pushing or writing to the stack. When pop slash peaking or reading from the stack. However, this is where it's different. Stack pointer has to be between, just keep it all red, has to be between 1 and 512. It kind of goes back to the other end. See, if the stack is 512, I can, I can pop or peak and it'll give me the value right here, and that'll be okay. But if the stack pointer is zero, and I try to pop or peak, that'll give me an error for a stack underflow. There is nothing, and then there is no negative one memory register. So just keep that in mind. This is kind of like the base, this will be the basics of the stack. And looking at your stack pointer, is going to be very helpful information. If you're going to be working with a stack, I definitely recommend you either write the stack pointer to a console so you can see where the data is going, 
or where you're at or do write it to the housing setting you know because it it is extremely helpful for troubleshooting when you're not getting the right value um there are a couple other commands but this is when you're when you have a chip or a housing trying to look at the others and they work a little bit different you have to get and the put commands and the d is just for exact id number for the housing or device you're reading uh the get is just reading or you know the get and put without the d is just to read from a, a housing or something that you put on the pin as you can tell you have d0 versus id number now a get grabs information from the stack based on the address. Now, because you write the address exactly, it'll be from 0 to 511. You don't have to worry about, about thinking, all right, I'm reading. I need to be one above what I want to read. No, no, no. That, it doesn't have to be that way. When you're using get input instructions, you reference it directly from the index. You don't have to do any mental arithmetic to find out what it is. You just... It's as simple as saying, get to R0, you know, D0, 0. And that, for that chip, it'll grab whatever value is at 0 here, which in this case happens to be 0, and put it at there, R0. And the put is the same way. You know, you can put D0, uh, let's say, tw address 20, and you want to put a 50. So what that means is another chip is coming to... A different chip and writing a 50 at their 20 index this chip stack is not manipulated at all but you're affecting the data within it uh i hope that kind of makes sense i'll continue talking about this and i'll show you a visual example so hope to see you then